Well, welcome everyone to one of my favorite parts of the show when we get to interview a Notre Dame great. And this particular Notre Dame great was one of my welcome to the NFL moments. He was a linebacker at Notre Dame, played eight years in the NFL, was is a Super Bowl champion, and now has a book called Rocky's Rules. Please welcome Rocky Boyman. Welcome, Rocky. Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Always a pleasure to be with you, my friend. You out of pads. One of my first memories in the NFL is we were playing at Indianapolis. Where I'm with the Broncos, and I've you know watched you your entire career coming from Notre Dame, and we all were paying attention to you. And all of a sudden, you kind of turned and you said, "Hey, Ryan," and I was like, "Oh, Ryan <laughs> Boyman knows my name." You know, it was so so cool. But let's talk about what you're doing now before we get to your playing career. You have a book, Rocky's Rules. Tell us about it. Yeah, I mean, it's it, life's wonderful, Ryan. And again, appreciate you having me on. Um, you know, I got a radio show here in Cincinnati that I do Monday through Friday, uh, 3 to 6. Uh, the Eddie and Rocky Show, it's on 700 WLW. And then, of course, doing the um, college football games for ESPN on the weekends. And that's been interesting, of course. Um, you know, traveling around, still doing those and getting COVID tests and getting swabs put up my nose every week and all that. But it's fun. Um, and then, uh, as you just said, I got my book. Um, just came out um, a couple months ago, Rocky's Rules. A playbook for becoming your best in challenging times. And um, just to briefly get into that real quick, I, uh, you know, over the course of my, my life, I've, you know, certain, I'm a principal guy. You know, what I mean, I, I kind of think you should live your life, life certain ways and have certain principles uh, to go about that. And um, so I started just writing down things that I thought were important to me. And, and then I, I started to think about why were those things, why were those kind of rules for life important to me? And, a lot of times there are things I learned through experiences in sports, you know, in college, uh, largely the NFL and failures and things like that. And all the experiences, Ryan, that you've had in the, in the NFL. And so I kind of put them all together. And um, again, it's uh, it's it's just something I think is, is good, especially where we are right now. Everyone's dealing with COVID and and all this sorts of just madness and, and just heartache and things with that and losing businesses, losing loved ones. So I think uh, now more than ever, the book is uh, very apropos and um, it's selling very, very well. I, I can't believe it. It's, it's great. And I'm just really, really excited about it. Well, I'm so glad you wrote a book. Writing a book, I think, is one of the best things that we can do, especially as NFL athletes, to give people an insight, really anyone. I believe everyone has a book in them. And one of the things I like is you say that we have a responsibility to be our best selves every day. And so my question to you with this book, what do you say to people then? Because now. If I come to you and say, hey, Rocky, I need you to be better for me, for our team right here. What are what's the what's the process you jump into? How can people respond when now more than ever people are being asked to be their best in new areas and areas that may have needed their attention before? Yeah, I mean, look, and you got to adapt and just I mean, I, mean, I, I think that if I, I've, I've often everyone's thought about the question, what are we doing here? Right. What's the purpose of life? And I, I, I think the, the point of life is to find your purpose find your purpose, and then become the best version of yourself as possible. So, and I think you do that for yourself, but also to your point, to a team. If I'm on uh, a team with you, you're going to need me to be the absolute best version of Rocky Boyman that I can possibly be. I'm going to need you to be the best version of Ryan Harris that you can be. That's how great teams accomplish great things. When all the sum of the individual parts collectively are doing whatever they got to do, to make sure they're on top of their game and they're they're giving their best effort and best version possible. And then when all those folks kind of come together, uh, that's when the magic happens. That's when great teams come about. That's when great uh, organizations, great businesses do, do wonderful things. Um, I, I think it's also just kind of to your point, now more important than ever, you got to be a little bit adaptable in life, right? I mean, just you know, COVID has kind of thrown things uh, up, in the, up in the air a little bit. So, you know, things are not always going to be perfect, right? I mean, we're doing this call on Zoom and there's many you know, complications with that and folks are doing business calls on Zoom and it's maybe not how we all used to do things, but uh, the, the reality is this is the situation we're in and the, the answer cannot be, oh, we, we just can't do that anymore. Or, we got to stop or we, we can't play college football this year because of this. No, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to look like it did maybe a year ago, but we gotta gotta find a way to navigate. The answer cannot be no. The answer needs to be yes, and it's going to be different. It's going to be a little bit, but but you gotta be adaptable. I, I think now more than ever. 
And one of the things you and I know, Notre Dame made us extremely adaptable when it came to the NFL. We've seen teammates struggle. And, and I remember one of the first times I realized Notre Dame made me a different caliber of player as I was reading a book on a plane. And one of my teammates was like, what are you reading books for? And I was like, what? When did you know in the NFL that Notre Dame had made you a different type of person and player as it came to your NFL career? That's interesting. I think Notre Dame, above all else, just pre prepared me for all the – just the, you know, from a scheduling standpoint, you know what I mean? Like it just how to – it prepared me to be able to deal with a lot of things, right? A lot of yeah. expectations, a lot of just responsibilities, things like that, you know, because the bar is set extraordinarily high at Notre Dame. And you got to either sink or swim. And there's lots – and look, as an athlete there – you know, look, no one's taking our test for us. No one's um, passing us in classes that we don't uh, deserve. You know, you, we, we got to do those things. So, but because of that, and because that's, boy, that can be hard and that can be stressful, uh, it, you, you learn a lot about yourself. You learn time management. I mean, I, God, I, I remember just the, the daily schedule of get up, you know, lift before class, go to breakfast, three classes, lunch, two classes, go to have practice, um, then after that, then you're going to the dining hall, and then you're 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 riding, riding your bike, rushing around trying to get to study hall by 9 p.m., studying until 10, 11 o'clock, and then doing it all over again. And, and if you're not, mm -hmm. you're you're not, um, you don't have a, a. Obviously, Notre Dame has a great support system that allows that to be possible. But if if you're not ready for that kind of challenge, you're not surrounded by the other people where that's the expectation. You're, you're not the exception. If you're doing that kind of schedule, you're not the exception. Everybody's doing that. So don't give me the, oh, um, I got so much to do. No, everybody's doing that at Notre Dame. And, but because of that, once you get out, my God, I, I think the sky's the limit for the amount of things that, that I and, and anybody can handle. Yeah. When I met my wife and she met some of the Notre Dame people, we brought her back to campus after a couple of games and she goes, all of you Notre Dame people are different, not just the football players. You're right. You're not the exception. You're part of the family, and this is how we work. And when you think about our Notre Dame family, what were some of your favorite memories on the field, Rocky? Oh, God. Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot came in, in, in games. You know, I remember uh, my junior year, uh, I, we played Nebraska at, at Notre Dame. And if you recall or remember reading anything about that, uh, there's a lot of Nebraska. There's a lot of red in the stands. I never forget Jeff Fain coming in from working out and saying, "Rock, the whole the stadium's red." Oh my God, there are all these Nebraska fans, and you know, then just going through that game, and we wound up losing that game in, in overtime, and which was a, an absolute heartbreaker. But uh, you know, it's just, just stuff like that, and the locker room, and and, and the, the players, and you know, guys like Anthony Weaver, guys like Tommy Lipinski, and. You know, all these great players that um, that I was able to be around. And also just even the non-football players. I mean, I roomed with uh, my entire uh, tenure at Notre Dame. I, I didn't room with football players. There were guys uh, in my hall, in, in my uh, in my dorm. Uh, they're still some of my best friends today. They're in my wedding and all that sort of thing. So it's just – it really is a, a family-oriented place. Again, because I think it's, it's, it's tougher there. It's, you know, the winters are harsh and it's – there's not a ton to do, and there's, you know, I mean, it's not a picnic there. So you got to have a support system. So because of that, you lean on the other kids, you know, the other students in the student body or your teammates uh, to get through. And then once you kind of come out, you, I think those bonds are just a little bit tighter because it is just a little bit harder at Notre Dame. And then lastly, Rocky, you've made a fantastic transition. I mean, you're killing it. You're on ESPN. You, as you mentioned, you do – you're a color analyst for college football. You have a show there weekdays, which I know that's a lot of prep as well. <laughs> what were some of the keys in terms of creating a new you? What did you take upon yourself to be responsible for to create a new career? Man, that's a great question, Ryan. Um, I, I think for me, uh, and I, I, I write about this in my book, I think every player, I mean, it's what you do your whole life and all of a sudden it, it's over. And I was excited because – I, I knew there was more I wanted to do in life and more I thought I could accomplish, but it's also scary because, you know, I, from age seven, you know, I was until like age 30, I was like this. I wanted to play football and I, and I was able to do that at a high level. But after that, it just became, I just started trying stuff, right? I, you know, just, and, and that was fun, but again, also, you know, a little bit, you know, some, some weary moments now, but I started throwing stuff up against the wall to see what I liked uh, but but then from there, once I found some things that I was 
had maybe a little bit of knack in and a little bit that I, that I enjoyed. Then it was just the same stuff I did as a player. And that's just prepared to the nth degree and never say no. When someone asks you to do something, you never say no. The answer is always yes. Hey, Rocky, can you help me do this uh, interview? Yes. Uh, can you help me edit this tape? Yes. Do uh, you think you can do this uh, game on public access for no money? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> you know, two years I worked in the media business. I didn't make a cent from it. Um, but that was the the real preparation years that got me, I thought, you know, just really helped me to develop my craft and um, network and and learn from people and, and set up meetings and just, I, there was never a meeting I turned down. I always wanted to, you know, just try to network and, and with as many folks as I could uh, that might be able to kind of help me find myself and kind of help me in, in the path that I wanted to take. Well, and that made you a champion on the field. What made your championship team, your Super Bowl championship team, so different? What was the key trait? Well, when you have Tony Dungy as your head coach, uh, you're starting with a, a pretty significant piece. Uh, I mean, what a wonderful human being he is. What a wonderful uh, coach uh, that he was. And I, I mean, I remember learning. I mean, I could tell stories about him all day. I, one real quick, I always loved the fact he – as the head coach, he always ran the scout team defense. And I was, and I remember early on thinking like, I have not asked, I said, coach, you're the head coach of the Indianapolis Colts. Why are you running the scout team? And he said, because this is the only time that I get to coach players. He goes, mm. that's what I miss about being a head coach. As a head coach, you're worrying about what time are we taking off uh, on the, uh, from the airport on Sunday or Saturday? What hotel are we staying at? What time's the meeting? What, when do I got to meet with the media? You're, you don't get to coach football players, which is what he loved to do. So that was kind of his time where he got his kind of scratch that itch of being a coach. Um, so, you know, having him a part of that, him being just a, you know, a, a, a spiritually guided person, I thought really helped. Um, obviously having Peyton Manning a part of that team and seeing him, Ryan, every day. Uh, the thing that always struck me about him, and again, being friends with him and seeing him every day for a couple of years there was he was God-given boom, had the talent of being the, one of the best quarterbacks to play, right? I mean, guy just he had the height, he had the intelligence, he had the arm, he had everything. But So he could have rolled out of bed and got, got the, rolled in the facility at 8.30 and left at 3 o'clock and still been an all-pro quarterback. But what made him, in my opinion, the greatest of all time was, was the extra work he put in. He was there on Tuesdays. He was getting a lift in on, on the Mondays. He was a part of them. I mean – in there early, staying late, it mattered to him. And, I, and what an example. Like, if Peyton Manning, the most God-given, blessed guy, not only on our team but in the entire NFL, if he's here early and he's putting in the extra work and he's doing all these extra things, what's your excuse, right? What's your excuse for to someone who is not blessed with as much talent? You better be doing extra work because that guy has the talent but also has, has the work ethic and the drive. So between Tony Dungy – and Peyton Manning, and then all the other great players we had. I mean, God, you know, Reggie Wayne, Marvin Harrison, uh, Robert Mathis. Uh, God, if I could be, in a, if I was in a foxhole, I could take one guy with me. It'd be Robert Mathis, uh, Bob Sanders. Uh, just a collection, Ryan, like you know, of just a lot of great individuals uh, coming together. But we certainly had some great leaders, and that that brought it all together. Well, you are a great individual and a great leader and a great representative of our ladies alumni. Get his book, Rocky's Rules. Rocky Boyman, thank you so much, brother. Ryan, you're the best, buddy. Thanks so much, and congrats to all the great things you're doing as well. Thanks, brother.